Look at that good looking guy there. All right, guys, so we are about ready actually we are ready so if you guys want to just kind of introduce your characters a little bit I know uh, this game has got much lighter background stories uh, than my previous games so just tell me just a little bit about your character where you're from stuff like that I mean no 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 need to do dissertations or anything like that so uh, heavy loves to do dissertations <laughs> in my 4E game. He does some hella good jobs, man. So, you guys can go ahead and start off, and then uh, after after you guys finish, I'll go into what's happened in the past and everything else. So, start start away. I'll, I'll pick it up. I'm Hex. I'm the Hex Blade. I, my, guy, my guy is a drow, and he it hails from Winterhaven. You're a, what, what class are you though? Nobody even knows what class you are. Blade. I'm a warlock hexblade. There you go. I there you go. <laughs> I think you just said hexblade, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Oh. yeah. Come on, tighten up over there, crow. This ain't <laughs> 7 Eleven, bud. Hey, 7 Eleven would kick me out if I walked in. Mm -hmm. Alright. Keep going, guys. I'll go next. I'm Vey. I'm playing a druid, a really kind of woodsy hippie type. Uh, definitely hairy, definitely smelly, and I have oh. my my buddy Boris the bear. Did you see that? I even give Boris a card too. I saw that. That's cool. Oh yeah, gotta 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 give uh, Boris some props. I'll give the mm -hmm. treant some props too later. Cool. I'm gonna give the treant a really really weird name. <laughs> Heavy! Uh, so I am Tylendros, the evocation mage. Um, coming from the uh, Feywild, pretty much got kicked out uh, from a certain somebody, and I'm out for some revenge. Go fast revenge. I, I am Lormar, the dwarven cleric. Uh, I hail from the mountains in the far north, where it's bitter and cold. Um, as a baby, I was raised up clanless. I was abandoned as a baby, so didn't have any family. So I um, left there and traveled down north. Yeah, that's where I'm at. Lormar, I changed your name back to Lormar from Lormar the clanless because that messes up my perception macro. Because the variable is pulling from Lormar, not Lormar the clanless. But, however, uh, you can still put Lormar the clanless in your name down below in the name slot. Uh, just because I, I had to change back because it was picking up no variable for you. I was like, whoa, Lormar's got a variable. But then I saw that you changed it to Lormar the Clanless. Okay. Got a little bit of information of, uh, of Lormar. Okay, so I gotta say that Lormar story made me a little sad. There's but no uh, cart in this one. Dirt the Daring. I am the uh, fighter, human of the group, and uh, I have been roaming the vast wastelands around known society, uh, helping small towns and villages uh, train their militias. And I am just an adventurer out looking for money and fame. Like 
every other adventurer. I like that. <clears throat> All right. So you guys have kind of been acquainted. Uh, you've been acquainted with one another for several months. Uh, you you all basically are from different portions of the Nentervale, but you all kind of congregated and met and actually got you know acquainted with one another in Winterhaven, and Winterhaven is up here uh, to the left side of the map, and Winterhaven is actually one of the larger cities in, if not probably the largest city in the Nentervale, but you know. This period of time, the Nentervale is in decline. Uh, there's a lot of a lot of evil running rampart. Uh, just just tons of monsters. I mean, there's there's empty homesteads all over the place. A lot of old small cities are are now vacated, and it seems like they've they've all most of the citizens that are left that that have fled, you know, their farmsteads and everything have have gone to either Winterhaven, Thalcrest, or Harkenvold. Hammerfast as well, but not as much. Uh, the but the Hammerfast is basically dwarves, but there are some other people as there as well. Uh, but you know, like I was saying, the Nentervale is in decline because of all the evil, and it is in definitely need of a new generation of heroes. And hopefully, you guys are are the one that's going to pick up the pick up the throne and kick some serious ass out here. So. You guys are, you know, up-and-coming adventurers, and there was an actual, uh, basically a, a commission that you had all taken from Winterhaven, uh, from a from a gentleman named, he was actually a cartographer, and his name was Burstag Zonthrop. And Burstag paid all of you, and actually that's how all of you have, have gotten your equipment, because you were basically... Of the security force, part of the security force uh, for his caravan. He's a cartographer, and, and since the since the Nenter Vale is really in decline, uh, you know, the leaders of Winterhaven and Falkress and, and the other major two cities, they all had got together and decided that the Vale needed to be re-cartographied. You know, they, it needed to be remapped. And you were part of this expedition, and you actually got several months. You, you got all the way up into Lake Wintermist. You, you got a lot of the forest, the Winterball Forest, uh, the Guardberry Downs, Ogrefist Hills. Uh, but when you got to the Cloak Hill, you were starting to make your way towards the center part of the Vale, central the central part of the Vale, and you had a a massive a massive orc and Drake incursion. It basically decimated your entire, you know, the whole shindig. Everybody just died. I'm talking most of the, secu actually all of the security. The only five, so you had three other party members as well, but they had died in the actual battle. And it was a, a long battle. It was, it was about an eight-hour battle, and everyone was killed, including Burstag, well, Burstag and his wife as well. And they had several children. They were killed. And it was just a mess. And it was kobolds. And this is uh, why you were, you know, mapping the cloak wood. Uh, the battle started at mid around midday, and it went well into the nighttime hours. And you retreated to Fallcrest. Uh, you actually had met with Lord Warden, uh, Farron McKaylee, and... He's not just a lord, he's a lord warden, so that makes him even that much better, I guess. But anyway, the lord warden had uh, put you up in an inn, actually gave you shelter, and you've been here recovering for almost a month. All of you had wounds, uh, several of you were on the brink of death, so you, you've spend, been basically uh, spending about the last month or so uh, recovering. And you guys have actually been staying in, in, in probably the the nicest in well not the nicest but uh, you've been staying at the Nenter Inn and you guys can actually see this on I have a uh, a map here and this is the Fall Crust map and you can see there's lots of locations on the map 
And you were sta I think it's uh, number four. I think you were staying at the yes, the Nenter Inn. And this is where you were staying. Uh, you have you do not have to pay anything. You are a guest of the Lord Warden. Uh, but your time is coming to an end for the basically the, the free ride. And the Lord Warden has inquired about the party sort of repaying a little bit of the. I don't want to say debt you have incurred, uh, but he has asked a favor to basically check out the kobolds. Uh, check out the kobold lair. Uh, see what you can do to actually try to, you know, decrease their numbers. And if you can exterminate all of them, he says that would even be better yet. Uh, but that is the that is the town of Fallcrest. Now, also, I want to show you the the actual Nenter Vale map as well. And the Nenter Vale map is set up the same way. There's a larger map that has several other locations on it that the main map doesn't have. I I didn't want to put every single uh, location on the map. So, as back to the the Nenter Vale, you can see that. And there's a lot of lore here and you guys have all of this at your disposal you can read all of this if there's any place that that you guys would like to explore I just need a little bit of notice I'm gonna give you guys uh, this is gonna be uh, there's gonna be several options in front of you tonight is basically straightforward because I, I we're gonna do a lot of combat tonight because I want you guys to learn the mechanics of 4th edition. So I'm kind of speaking out of context here. 4th edition is good. It's logical. It, this is not like any other D&D edition you've played. And it, it's really good. It's probably my favorite now. And I love D&D Classic and I love 1st edition. But this has so much more to offer. And I think you guys will like it too. And D&D Next, when it comes out, I hope it only compares to this. But I, I have faith, but, but we'll see when D&D Next comes out. There's just a lot of information. That's, I love information about a game. I love lore. I love variety. And Essentials, basically, 4th edition, it has everything you could ever want in a game. So, you know, it, it's, it's definitely a good game. So tonight is going to be a lot of a lot of the actual physical mechanics of the game, you know, combat and other things, other fun things. All right. So you guys have actually been uh, commissioned by Lord Warden now to take care of these kobolds. Uh, is there is there anywhere that you guys would like to to actually check out uh, in Fallcrest? I mean, you've got tons of things you can do. There's plenty of people to see there's I think there's 30 locations on the map they're all they're all in detail uh, yeah got a lot of stuff to do and there's gonna be a lot more things uh, but tonight everything is and I have more things as well but tonight is basically kobolds to, to get used to combat and skills and movement and, and everything else so give me something to kill <laughs> Anyone? I want to. Uh, I want to learn a little bit, a little more about the so-called kobolds that are bugging you people. Okay. Well, I'll tell you what. Seeing that you are our resident rogue type, I'm gonna speak out of context and tell you several things. The way that I like to do rogues are. This is the way that we used to play when I was kids, playing classic and first. You're gonna you're gonna be the main information getter, just about in most cases. You're gonna have the best chance to get information, and that's from contacts, you know, other other guilds, in towns, uh, and and all guilds aren't known. All thieves guilds aren't known, so you're gonna have the best chance and and I'll make you do streetwise checks and stuff when you go into town so that, that that's pretty much what you're gonna need to do and, and everybody's gonna you know be able to do streetwise you know 
checks as well because that's a good way to actually find out information about the town you know you just hear hearsay and and you know it's like a, about the character sheet guys you can literally go you can click on the streetwise and it'll tell you what streetwise does basically you know it's like in, like it says on the handout uh, when in a settlement, village, or town, or city, make a streetwise check to find out what's going on, who the movers and shakers are, where to get, what you need, and how to get there, and where not to go. So, it's actually pretty cool. This is nothing like you guys have played in D&D Next. I mean, there, this is actually, there's a lot more to the system. So, if you guys, and there's a lot of different skills. I mean, there's heal, history, nature, I mean, just all kinds of stuff. So... Dungeoneering, just diplomacy, bluff, athletics, insight. You know, insight will let you detect if somebody's bullshitting you or not. You can in intimidate. There's nature. I mean, it's, it's, and it's all stat based. So I'm sure you guys have, have probably already read over that stuff, but I figured I'd just kind of go over it one more time for you. So. But if you guys want to, you know, go to any of the, the locations in town before we get started, feel free to. So, I mean,. I'm going to press the couple of ins that I know of about information about the information on on the, our, our so-called cobalt friends. Well, you've you've been staying in the the Nenter Inn. I believe there is the Silver Unicorn Inn, and then there's another inn as well. Uh, the, the Lucky Gnome. The Lucky Gnome. There you go. I'm going to start with Tap the Lucky House. Gnome. The Lucky Nim is widely regarded as the cheapest and coarsest of Fallcrest drinking establishments. Uh, it caters to the porters and laborers who work at the nearby docks, and fist fights are a nightly occurrence. Wow, that'd be good for you then. Oh, and you'll also notice that Fallcrest is actually divided into two different areas. There is a upper and lower quay. And basically... Um, it's there's a lot of catacombs and everything in this you know in the trench that separates the, the town and uh, there's a lot of things there's actually just quite a lot there's a quite a bit to do in this town i mean i'm i just can't you guys are going to have to explore it for yourself but maybe maybe we should probably wait till next week to do that yeah i think that's probably going to be about the best thing to do uh, tonight, let's just let's just go ahead and get get in some combat because I I, I want to show you guys how to do all this stuff. So, well, you guys will you guys will pick it up. So, essentials is pretty fun. So, but uh, about the kobolds, crow, you've gathered in it's probably the last week you've been able to get around. You were you were one of the ones that were actually uh, damn near dead when you actually got to Fallcrest, and you've recovered quite nicely. You you don't have any kind of you know, lingering ailments or, or anything like that. And you know the actual location, uh, not only from the Lord Warden in the town, but there's a couple other contacts that you've actually, uh, you know, come into and everything, and you've actually found the location. And it is w it is within the, the cloak wood. So you have a map, and uh, it's it's really easily uh, legible you can you can find it no problem at all okay <clears throat> so all right we're gonna go to our first essentials map and I'm gonna set you guys over real quick I'll give you a little bit of information about the actual Cobalt Hall. This is this is also a, other information that, that you've been able to find out as well. Not only you, but the entire party as well. Uh, Lormar's found out some from the from the temple and uh, what what deity are you are you worshiping this time around, Lormar? Uh Palor. Oh, you gave up on your old deity? How dare you? Yeah. 
Man. <laughs> you had uh, Melora last time, didn't you? No, Coraline. Ah, Coraline. Coraline. Uh, Coraline, that's it. Because Coraline loves you. I remember that. Good old sea land. <clears throat> <laughs> Basically, this is a, a ruined manor that's now known as Kobold Hall. This is the information that you've been able to, to gather the last several weeks. Uh, this was once a minor lord's proud holding. Uh, there's a, a walled keep over this wall. It is a walled keep overlooking the old king's road. Uh, you're at, you know, it's it's was really easy to find. And there's several warring factions within this Cobalt Hall, and you've actually found out that uh, the Skull Kicker tribe. There's there were several tribes, two or three different tribes that were in here. But the, the Skull Kicker tribe was the actual tribe that came out on top. So that they basically have free reign of, of everything. And you do know that they have um, not just kobolds, but there is also a <clears throat> sort of like a, they have a dragon fetish. And... They also have acquired some drakes, which actually had attacked you and the caravan, your cartography caravan, as you guys were mapping the entire Vale. Uh, and there's also something else that a few of the wizards back in Fallcrest, they aren't actually able to determine, uh, but they think that there's a, a much greater power involved than just the kobolds. And, and the reason for that is... is these kobolds are just too organized. I mean, they, they literally took two other tribes out within this place. But they just they just show a lot more organization than your normal your normal, you know, normal kobold tribe. So you you're gonna need to definitely find some, some information out as well. So you guys have descended down into the uh, the actual first level of the hall. And dominating the room ahead is a long trench filled with a glowing green substance. Beyond the trench, a small reptilian humanoid stands in a shadowy chamber, gaping at you. It carries a sling and quickly reaches and and quickly reaches into a pouch at its belt for a stone. It hisses and shouts, "Intruders! Intruders!" And you recognize this as a as a kobold. Now, as you guys can can see uh, the, the kobolds as you look ahead the kobolds are really small now the thing that I haven't done in the past I haven't used grids I I, I hate grids I I'm starting to like them now because the grids make sense especially in fourth edition and we tried to use this we tried to go gridless in 4e and it just didn't work out so that's why we're going to do grids and just start with grids right off the bat. It's not like, I mean, there's really no point on using the ruler anymore uh, because you're just going to be able to move X amount of spaces. That's what your movement's all about. So if you have a five movement or a six movement, you move five spaces. You can move diagonally. You can move forward, backwards. Uh, if you move through... Uh, hazardous areas it consumes two movement squares instead of one like that that is not this these uh, this rubble in here that's straight ahead I put that there just to show you but that's not that's not going to be a, a hazardous terrain so you're not going to have to worry about eating up double movement for that now I'll let you know when it is hazardous so you know instead of instead of moving and using one square it'll really use two until you get out of it so but as you can see there's a lot of uh, the cards on your sheet as well a lot of it has the movement rules on it uh, you know your attacks if you're using area of attack area of effect attacks all that stuff so I tried to put as much information on these cards for you as I could so alright so you guys have gotten down into the the kobold hall uh, you've actually seen a right here, which is quite a bit ahead. He's actually 
pull the sling out and you can see that he's a small creature and that's accurately represented so uh, he basically takes up just a portion so you know I'm gonna bring him over here real quick let's bring him over here all right Dave, I'll pull the quick, Boris back. Dave quick question do mm -hmm. you have the grids turned on I do have the right grids now? turned on yeah you I can can't move. see them there you can turn it you well yeah they're on you can see them only ones I can see are the ones over the green. Yeah, that, that's, well, that's, that's about the, it. Uh, yeah. Tile mm, is yeah. With yeah. Grid. You can uh, you'll be able to you'll be able to tell because if you move like yeah, you'll snap. Just, yeah, just just grid. move move up one time. You'll 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 see what I'm talking about. Okay. So yeah, that's 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 how you do it. There's okay. no more you know moving, you know twenty feet and three people standing within a five foot square it's just not the way it's going to work anymore <laughs> i tried to envision it to where you know somebody would be here somebody would be here a target would be here a target would be here and a target would be here and this is how it's supposed to be but it wasn't turning out like that it was it was turning out where you know i'd have three people standing in one square and it just it wasn't working so yeah. So, anyways, you guys get the whole reason why I'm I'm doing this now. So, which is a good thing. And it is it a, a still a free pass through your um, allied party members? Yeah, absolutely. You can you can travel between okay. through party members. Yeah, you just can't end in the same space as they have the right. the same space as they're in. So, unless they're knocked prone. Now, if they're knocked prone then you can but yeah. whenever he's not prone then I believe that person needs to shift out immediately or something like that or you have to shift out one of the two I'll have to reread that but I know that you can be in the same space if, if somebody's prone so okay. you know but basically uh, the ceilings probably about 15 foot tall you see a little bit of a uh, a green mist or green smoke coming out of the 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 pit you really can't see at the bottom because uh it, it, you can definitely tell that it's a hole so i'm gonna i'm gonna go ahead and, and you guys put your tokens on the on the map of how you actually came down and try try to stay in within the first eight squares hey dave i'm i'm not sure if i'm seeing what i'm supposed to be seeing i'm like my character's standing right in front of like a little green dragon thing Oh, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, I was, uh, give me one second there. Yeah, I'd like to light the torch if I don't already have it lit. Yeah, I goofed up on that there, because I was, uh, working on this heavy, I'm um, sorry, dirt, and I just was not, I just forgot to pull your token back to the, back to the group, so... What'd you do? Go looking for your token? No, it's just whatever. That's the screen that popped up for me. And it w didn't sound like what you were describing, so I was like, what? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so who, who has a who has a light spell? I mean, th this, this room is dim lit. It's not... You know, there are sconces on the wall. And they're they're not torches. It's sort of like a sort of like a hand holding some coals with with fire. So that's basically the visibility that you have. And it is it is a dimly lit room. So. All right. Well, I have low light. I'm, I don't know if I'm getting it or not, but I'm going to cast light on one of my floating orbs. Okay. I'm gonna, gonna, you're going to cast yeah. light. What can I yell something? Oh, yes. Can I yell? Yeah, yeah. I also have low light vision. I'm not sure how that works out. I have Check dark vision. Well, dark vision, you're gonna see the same thing anyway right now, crow. So, all right, who's putting light on? Somebody said they're putting light on one of my orbs. Yeah, do you have light? No, I do not. If somebody wants to cast it on my shield, that'd be nifty. Alright, I'll also cast light on his shield. Dirt shield. 
Ah, so that's a cantrip, isn't it? Yes, indeed. Oh, that I'll cast sun, Sun's Glow on myself. And I believe that's that's your uh, free cast as well, isn't it? Yeah. Alright, now, when you guys